of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Very good morning and welcome to this service of Choral Eucharist on the third Sunday of Advent. Sunday when we hear the voice of John the Baptist crying in the wilderness, the one who said of Jesus Christ, He must increase, I must decrease. So as we come to this holy sacrament, may our Lord Jesus Christ increase within us and may we decrease as God fills all in all. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. When the Lord comes, he will bring to light the things now hidden in darkness, and will disclose the secret purposes of the heart. Therefore, in the light of Christ, let us confess our sins. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against thee and against our name in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate thought. We are now sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of thy Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past us, and grant that we may serve thee in newness of life, to the glory of thy name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O Lord Jesus Christ, who at thy first coming didst send thy messenger to prepare thy way before thee, Grant that the ministers and stewards of thy mysteries may likewise so prepare and make ready thy way by the turning of the hearts of the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, that at thy second coming to judge the world we may be found unacceptable people in thy sight, who livest and reignest with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour and the day of vengeance of, of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. They shall build up ancient ruins. 
They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations, and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robes of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels, for as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. This is the word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. Amen. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. John. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, what then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, no. Then they said to him, who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, why then are you baptizing if you are neither the Messiah nor Elijah nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. This took place in Bethany across the Jordan where John was baptizing. This is the gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. A long time ago, I once witnessed a diocesan bishop, not in this diocese, I hasten to add, giving a dressing down to one of his suffragan bishops, let's call him Bishop X, and reminding him of what his function as a suffragan bishop was. 
What you have to remember, X, said the diocesan bishop, is that when I am absent, you are me. And when I am present, you are nobody. Poor Bishop X looked as if all the air had been let out of him, which I suppose it had been. And the trouble is, the diocesan was on quite solid ground. A suffragan was traditionally regarded as no more than a kind of extension of the diocesan, with no authority of his or her own. When I am absent, you're me. When I'm present, you're nobody. I remembered poor Bishop X when I was thinking about John the Baptist in today's gospel. The difference is that John is positively eager to be thought of as a nobody. The priests and the Levites come and demand that he identifies himself. Are you the Messiah? No. Are you Elijah? Elijah, remember, was the prophet who was taken up into heaven in a fiery chariot and who was expected to come back at the end of the world. So, are you Elijah? No. Are you the prophet? By the prophet, they mean Moses, who was also expected to come back at the end of the world. So are you Moses? No. Who are you then? I am a voice crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. For myself, says John, I am nothing at all. My only importance is to tell you about the one I represent and I am not worthy to untie his shoes. Later on, John describes himself as the best man at a wedding. It's the groom, he says, the Messiah, who possesses his bride, the church. When the wedding happens, the best man rejoices and prepares for it, but once it has happened, it's time for him to push off. As Christ increases, says John, so must I decrease. Well, I think today's gospel is a bit of a gift to me because today I have to tell you that fairly soon I am pushing off too. And I want to point out that what John says about himself and his own unimportance applies equally to me and indeed to all clergy. I've accepted an offer to go and be associate chaplain at St. George's, the Anglican Church in Paris. This has not been an easy decision to make, but I would have had to retire in two years' time from here anyway, and this way I should be able to go on a bit longer if I'm spared. It also means that Grant and I can then come back to St. Albans to retire. And my successor as Dean won't have to put up with me living round the corner, grumbling how much better things were in my day. Or at least they'll have a couple of years before I start doing that. St. George's is a good church. I know it well, and I expect some of you may know it too. Its churchmanship and ethos are very similar to the Abbey. As well as the English-speaking congregation, there's a large and growing congregation of French-speaking Anglicans too. And it's in the role of teaching and preaching and building up the congregations in both languages that they want me to help with. The bishop here has kindly given me a few weeks off to prepare so my last Sunday here will be February the 14th, St. Valentine's Day. And I officially start in Paris on April the 1st, April Fool's Day. St. Albans has been a big chunk of our lives and it will be hard to leave this job even if we are not ultimately leaving this place. Grant and I have very particular reasons 
for appreciating the welcome and the support that we've received here, indeed that we received even before we arrived. I'll never forget coming to the 9.30 service here for the very first time. It was just after I had been appointed as Dean, but it was before I was officially installed. So I came to the 9.30 and hid behind a pillar disguised in civvies in order to see what the place was like. As I went out of that service, I realized that there were pickets on all the doors, stopping the congregation as we went out. Some people had come up from a couple of big evangelical churches in London, and they were trying to collect signatures for a petition to stop me being installed as dean. That was the only time in my life that I've been asked to sign a petition against myself. <laughs> but what really impressed me and moved me and made me want to come here and serve this place was the fact that nobody did sign it. No one across a whole Sunday, which means, well, up to a thousand people, I suppose, that were accosted. Nobody signed, which I thought was astonishing given that nobody here even knew us then, and having read the papers, they must have wondered what on earth they were getting. But nobody here wanted to shut us out. Now, of course, this building and the people in it can sometimes be a pain in the neck. But there's a real depth of Christian instinct here, which I think is something to do with the extraordinary sense of presence in this cathedral, which helps you to pray and almost compels you to be a Christian. The nearness of God and Alban and all the communion of saints is palpable here, and it rubs off. Now, that's not something I brought. That was here already, had been for centuries and centuries. I hope I might have helped you to feel it and understand it a bit more, but it's nothing to do with me. For me, it's just been wonderful to be here and to be able to draw for such a long time on that spiritual strength and warmth in this place, not least when having to go out and deal with the rest of the church as it is elsewhere. But I do want you to see, as John the Baptist saw, that when we are talking about the presence of God and our relationship with God, individuals don't matter. In fact, if they matter too much, they get in the way. Sometimes you hear about clergy who are hugely successful in their parish and build up the congregation and everybody thinks they're wonderful. And then when they leave, it all collapses behind them which of course means they failed because they've attached people to themselves, not to Christ. Like John the Baptist, the priest who is the real success is the best man at the wedding, who prepares the way, then disappears. As Christ grows greater, so must I grow less. So please, between now and St. Valentine's Day, don't go on about my leaving as if it really mattered, because it really doesn't. And anyway, it's not adieu, it's au revoir. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, 
begotten his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man. And he was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again, according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeded from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe in one Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, we humbly beseech thee to inspire continually the universal Church with the spirit of truth, unity and concord, that all who confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. Lord, hear us. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops, priests, and deacons, especially to thy servant Alan, our bishop, and Geoffrey, our dean, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. Lord, hear us. Lord, To all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present that they may serve thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. Lord, hear us. Lord, We beseech thee, O Lord, to direct with thy heavenly wisdom those who rule over the nations of the world. Bless thy servant Elizabeth, our Queen, and all who exercise authority under her, that thy people may be faithfully and justly governed the future of this nation and our near neighbours on the European continent may be organised with wisdom, with humility and with grace. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord, Lord. Thy goodness, O Lord, help and comfort all who are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness or any other adversity. We bring before the throne of grace any known to us in particular who are in need, any who have asked us unworthy as we are in this past week for our own prayers. Grant them and all thy people, O Lord, a happy issue out of all their afflictions. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord hear us. We commend to thy gracious keeping, O Lord, all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear. For those whose year's mind is at this time, and for the recently departed, among them by name praying for Graham Atkinson, Simon Baines, Sarah Clark, Gordon Hufford, Michael Commode, Mary Tate, Ray Ward, Peter Woodmansey, and Ben Coates. Beseeching thee to grant them everlasting light and peace. Lord, hear us. We bless thy holy name for the grace and virtue declared in the Blessed Virgin Mary, Holy Martyr Alban, and in all the saints. Grant that we, rejoicing in their fellowship and following their good examples, may be partakers with them of thy heavenly kingdom. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of thy Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. In the tender mercy of our God, the day spring from on high shall break upon us to give light to those who dwell in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. 
The peace of the Lord be always with you. give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ, thine only Son, our Lord. And now we give thee thanks, because thou didst send him to redeem us from sin and death, and to make us inheritors of everlasting life, that when he shall come again in power and great triumph to judge the world, we may with joy behold his appearing, and in confidence may stand before him. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name evermore, praising thee and singing. Oh.
Glory be to thee, almighty God, our heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute, and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that by the power of thy Holy Spirit, we receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. Who, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks to thee, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks to thee, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, we, thy humble servants, having in remembrance the precious death and passion of thy dear Son, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, entirely desire thy fatherly goodness, mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins, and all other benefits of his passion. And although we be unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offences, and to grant that all we who are partakers of this holy communion may be fulfilled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom, and with whom, and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. Amen. So let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We do not presume Our to come to this table as well, trusting in our own righteousness, but in time and all the great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table. But thou art the same Lord, whose nature is always.
Let us pray. We give thee thanks, O Lord, for these thy heavenly gifts. Kindle in us the fire of thy spirit, that when our Saviour Christ shall come again, we may shine as lights before his face, who liveth and reigneth now and for ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine upon you. Scatter the darkness from before your path and make you ready to meet him when he comes in glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks. Thanks.